I'm with Leslie Andrews from 3Cloud, one of my colleagues in the, uh, the Microsoft Data Platform. And uh, we're going to chat about community and work and uh, whatever we want to, and that's coming up. Leslie, it's awesome, awesome to finally meet you. Yes, it's great to meet you too, Paul. We've been working together for a few years now, but yes. we've we've you know we've been in Teams meetings together, and we've been working virtually. But yes, it's the first time that we've we've actually uh, actually we met. Yes, in and, person. And uh, we're socially distanced today. We are. So we're we're playing by the rules. Yes. And, uh, yes, uh, we are. It's a strange world that we live in. But I'm so glad you're here. I'm, I'm, it's it's awesome to, to be here. Yes. Uh, you are speaking at Pass Summit. I am. Coming up in just a few weeks. I know. What's your topic? Uh, Azure Data Factory for Beginners. Let's mm -hmm. make some data. I'm going to be uh, doing a brief introduction to Data Factory, what it is, and then some demos on how to use it, uh, some basic configuration tables to set up some complex <laughs> for a demo, mm -hmm. uh, data patterns, and just help expose people to what a great tool it is. All right. When, when did you make the transition from uh, working with, with SQL Server and, and other data tools on-prem to the cloud? Just with the switch to 3Cloud. Yeah. Um, in fact, when I started, I didn't have very much cloud experience at all. It had all mm -hmm. been on-prem. But I know that you've been working with SQL Server for a long time. You've yes, a long time. In the yes, community. and and I've spoken at last SQL Saturdays. Spoke at Bass Virtual Summit last year. Was a speaker idol contestant in 2018 mm -hmm. and 2019. Um, in fact, it was going to pass in 2017 that really changed my life. Um, I uh, was working at the city of Albuquerque at the time. I told my boss, hey, you know, there's this conference I want to go to. I'd wanted to go for forever, but wasn't going to spend my, my own money. It wasn't, you know, anything that I could afford to do. <clears throat> and he was like, well, send me some information. And the city actually paid for me to go. And uh, it, it was life changing. I went to Eddie Worley's session, So You Want to Be the Next Great Speaker. Mm -hmm. And while I was sitting in that session, I uh, was like, there has got to be a police data conference, police tech conference, something. And I Googled it, and there was a, a conference, the International Association of P Chiefs of Police that the call for speaker closed in a week. I had a week to like write an abstract and submit, and I did, and they picked me. And awesome. I, was, I know. And so then I was like, oh, well now I need to practice. <laughs> so I started speaking at SQL Saturdays again, and, and that was my prep for that other conference. And then I just kept doing it, and then got an IDERA ACE uh, nomination and mm -hmm. was selected for that in 2018, 2019. Went back to Summit on my own dime the next two years because it was that big of a life changer for me. That yeah. at, at that point, I was like, OK, I, I have to go back. And I'm, I'm, if the city's not going to pay for it, I will. And, and so I did, and have just continued to meet amazing people from all over the world and, and learn and share and connect. and. That's how I got this job. Fantastic. You know, the PASS community was just such an anchor for so many people in their careers, our, our social circles. I mean, you know, we, we not only have uh, work and professional colleagues within the PASS organization and the data platform in general, but, but good friends. I yep. mean, it's really been a big part of our lives. Yes. So a little over a year ago, we got some, we got some news, and that was that, that PASS was shutting their doors. They, yes. they, they just they were insolvent. And they couldn't continue to to run their organization. Heartbreaking. How, yeah. How did that feel? It, it, it really felt like the the structure that allowed us to grow that community was just kind of gone. Even with the the virtual SQL Saturdays, that just really wasn't even the same as the the ability to go somewhere where there's a SQL Saturday and a group of people that. We all do this, and we all know each other, and, you know, oh, I, I know Paul because he knows, you know, Buck, and mm -hmm. those connections. And I, I just really think that it, it was just really wrench, heart-wrenching. I, I still just am, I can't imagine, I mean, I know what, 
we have something going forward, but it's it's not the same. And yeah. and I don't know that we'll ever get back to where that community is really as connected as it was. Because yeah. I, I think that there's still lots of community. There's just this little data community over here and this little data community over here. And it's not quite as integrated and cohesive as it was before. So I, obviously the pandemic certainly uh, was a big factor in, in a lot of the changes that we've seen. Um, but how much of that do you think is just the industry changing? Just, you know, away from SQL Server on-prem to cloud services, and now there's so many different data tools that aren't just SQL Server. Yeah. I, I think that's part of it, but I think also that if we could come together in the Azure community, mm -hmm. even if it's just the Azure data community, and, and have that cohesiveness and togetherness in, in, a, in a group, that we can recover. I think that there's there's a path forward. We just have to expand what we think of as that community. We need the the data factory people and the purview people and the um, uh, yeah, database the, the synapse people, people. Right, the, synapse, the data right, right, exactly. People, it's it's yeah, just it's, growing and growing and yeah. growing. And I think that because there's so much, so it's because it's so wide now, that you have to know a little bit about everything. Yeah. And, and then when you get to the, oh, I have to know a whole bunch about this, be able to dive deep into that thing and, and learn more about the specific things that it can do and how it can and improve whatever it is you're trying to work on. And, but you, you have to have that ability to go wide and go deep. Yeah. And well, uh, you know, working in tech, change is inevitable. Uh, I mean, change is always going to happen. And, you know, if, if, if you want to learn to do one thing and do it for 20 years, don't get into data, don't get into software. No. You know, it's, we have to reinvent ourselves every three or four years. Yes. But I think that's been amplified in the past few years yeah. with, with the shift to the cloud and just, you know, having to embrace so many different tools and technologies. Now. Well, especially because it's not just about the data. It's about the network and the storage and the security and all of the other... Um, ancillary things that somebody else used to have to worry about. Somebody else used to have to worry about the storage and how big it was and now that's part of the data people because we're moving those files there and, and it's part of our ETL process that puts those files there. So now we have to be responsible for storage and you know uh, retention information. How long do we keep that stuff? What do we keep it for? Do we want to keep it forever? Well, then we have to pay for it forever. Right. And how That's much does that cost? That's a completely different model. It, exactly. It's not on my hard drive anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, and being able to raise those concerns with the people that make those decisions and let them know, hey, you're right. You can keep all of this. This is how much it will cost you. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? Do you really need to keep that? Forever. Forever. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it, uh, it, you know, when, when we learned that the, the, the past organization was shutting down as it was previously defined, that no doubt that that was a bummer. But um, one, of, one of the leading vendors and sponsors of PASS, Redgate Software, yep. stepped up yep. and said, we'll run the community. Yep. In fact, we'll take over the PASS name. Uh, are, are you hopeful that that, that that will come to fruition? I am. I have I've read some concerns and, and seen some things that Redgate brought in a bunch of the the same people that had run it in the past mm -hmm. and, and that there's some concerns that they're doing the same things that they did before and that right. maybe it you know Well and we're it, interfacing with those people now. It, it, yes. They're the same old same faces. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Same people that we've worked with, which is <laughs> yes. awesome because yes. they've done and a great job before. So so you know, so will it change if it's got the same people? Maybe, maybe not. I also know that on the Microsoft side, the Azure data community stepped up and there's a whole support system and, and offerings there for data community. And, and I kind of feel like there, there could have been some collaboration between those two groups to make one big thing instead of like the two kind of separate things, the Azure data community and then the past Redgate mm -hmm. um, process. And, but I, I think it's great that they both stepped up. Microsoft stepped up and said, here's our data platform community that we want to support, and here's tools that you can use for your user groups, and, and they did all of that to help 
some of the ground root um, organizations that support those those bigger groups. Because PASS was the user group sending people to learn, and, and mm -hmm. that, that was, you know, a big funnel for them. And I think that, I know our user group has struggled, and, and we need we need some help in trying to get more people and more topics, and it, it's just hard. It's a yeah. lot of work to get that and to get people to realize it's in their best interest to continue to learn and grow and expose themselves and have a growth learn sure. mindset um, and and not go, oh, well, I'm not going to go on a Saturday because that's my day. Yeah. And we've experienced the same thing in Portland. Uh, I, I think, you know, over the years, and, you know, thanks to our early leadership, Arnie Rowland and Vern Robbie, and, you know, some people have worked very, very hard. You know, we, we built up membership, and we have very good numbers at SQL Saturdays mm -hmm. and in our monthly user groups. Um, with the pandemic, that was, it was bumpy. You know, it's, it was hard to, to engage with people virtually and have the same experience. Um, you know, and so we're we're trying to do the same thing, and yeah. then we're also trying to figure out when we can meet in person, and you know, <laughs> how do you book a venue, and how do you socially distance and play by the rules? That's all really complicated. Right it now. it absolutely is, mm -hmm. yeah. and 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 I don't know that anybody has an easy answer. I I know that the, the the user groups have tried really hard to keep keep things going, have the virtual sessions, have you know speakers come in and do that, but from the speakers aspect. It's really hard to do the virtual presentation. Right. You know, you're not you're not engaging. You're not seeing eyeballs and yes. getting feedback I, immediately. I, I don't get the same you know response from my monitor that I get from people's yep. faces in rooms. Yep. And so, I think we as speakers have struggled to want to. At least I know I have. I've struggled to want to do some of those user sessions and to to make myself get out there and and create a new presentation. It's hard to create a new presentation when you're just not that that wowed. Oh, yeah. I'm super excited to go and do this. Yeah. You know, well, I'm not. I'm not super excited to go sit in my back room and you know. Yeah, you, have to, you, have, you have to kind of cultivate your own energy because yes. you know the, the, we, we don't have the the audience to draw that energy yes. from. Uh, Absolutely. So we're we're headed to the first live conference that that I will have experienced since the beginning of the pandemic in Orlando, Orlando Live. Um, and then, of course, the week before that is the past summit, which which will be virtual. And I'm not quite sure what to expect. I mean, I'm excited to be in front of an audience. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, it's going to be different. I don't, I don't know how it's going yeah. to be different. But, but excited. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was accepted at uh, Code Mash um, mm -hmm. in uh, Sandusky, Ohio, okay. in January. And when I saw the call for speaker, I was like. Uh, January, Ohio. <laughs> right. uh -huh. but, but then one of the, my other speaker friends was like, "Oh, check out the venue!" And it's like in this um, Kalahari water park resort. It's like this African-themed water park with like it's like this huge resort. And I'm okay. like, so "Okay, you're not really experiencing winter. It's, no. it's just all self-contained." <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Um, it's the same thing. I'm I'm really excited for an in-person conference again, especially someplace cool like that where mm -hmm. and they're footing the, the the room and the conference fee. So I have to pay for is the the airfare. <laughs> so cool. yes, but well, but I'm I, like I, I hope that goes extremely I, well. I, I know, but, it's, but the same thing. I'm like hmm, kind of nervous now, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> going with other people in like a big big format. All right, so we've been talking about community and obviously you're very involved in the community. You you help run the user group here. I do. And uh, tell me about the user group and give me the address. Um, it is the Albuquerque SQL Server user group. I've just been on the board since earlier this year. Uh, one of our, our board members dropped off and so I got selected by Chris Hyde and okay. the rest of the, the Albuquerque group uh, to, to join them. So I was really excited to get to be picked for that. Um, again, we haven't done much in the past six months because pandemic. Sure. Um, but we're, I think we're looking forward to uh, next week is the user group summit uh, that Microsoft is putting on. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting some tools and tips from, from that group on how we can make our user group better, how to get more participation, 
um, you know, sponsorship, get businesses to, to want to send their people to, to talk to us and, and tell us what they know. And okay. And if so. somebody wants to speak at your user group, who should they contact? Chris Hyde. Okay. Contact Chris Hyde. Yep. All right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll link to, to yes. Chris's address. Yes. All right. I tried to connect <laughs> with Chris and he's out of town. He gets back tomorrow. Okay. And of course we're <laughs> leaving tomorrow. So that, that didn't work out. <clears throat> but uh, Chris has always been really good about, about managing the, the sequel train out of Portland up yes. to Seattle when we yep. were doing sequel Saturday, the weekend before past summer. Yes. That was always, always a good time. Yep. He's a good guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. How important is community in a person's career? In I would say that it is probably one of the most important pieces of career building and networking. Um, so my last job, which I loved, I was the database architect at the city of Albuquerque for the police department. Mm -hmm. We have a settlement agreement with the Department of Justice here in Albuquerque uh, for excessive use of force. And uh, our settlement agreement says a whole bunch of things like you will collect this data and report on it. And about five years ago, we were two years into the agreement and somebody was like, well, hey, are we collecting any of this data and reporting on it? And they weren't. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I came in and I built... <laughs> Not uh, as it was in the statement of work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I went in and I built uh, SSIS packages to collect all of the data from all of the different source systems and do the reports that required mm -hmm. by the settlement agreement. And I really liked the work that I did. And um, it, it was meaningful. I've, I've worked 15 years in the public sector. I worked for the courthouse here in Albuquerque before. I think that that giving back to your, commu your, your community that you live in is, is an important part of being a citizen. And um, one day though, I had had it up to here. I'd been miserable for like a year. I'd been, I'd been asking for a raise and not being able to get one and my boss wasn't willing to go to bat for me and, and, and I just was fed up. And I went home and I tweeted. I said, you know, I may speak on data modeling but I do SSIS, ETL, SSRS, Power BI, and I want a new job. Please share. Okay. And the last time I looked, like 30,000 retweets because of all of the people that I met in the community. Wow. I mean, just, just the amplification that I got from all of the people that I, all my speaker friends that work at really great companies that just, you know, shared it and, and retweeted it and blah. Uh, so the community had your back. Absolutely. And it was Robin yeah. who t told Kim, hey, you should contact her. And so Kim reached out to me, said, hey, we want to interview. I had like five interviews within the week and two job offers like in a month. Wow. Seriously, it was it, because of those people, because I had all of those connections. I got this job. Well, and we're a pretty close-knit community. Yeah, absolutely. We take care of and each other. Yes, and uh, since I've been here, I, I couldn't have been happier. I, Fantastic. I, I, the work is good. I like the people. You know, um, I've had great bosses. Both, you know, Steve and Kathy have, have both been really good for helping me see more potential and, mm -hmm. and know that hey, I, I am worth it and, you know, I, 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 I can do the work. I've always known I can do the work. It's finally getting somebody to believe, hey, she can be a superstar and let's just let her go do that. And so what, what, what is so unique about, about our internal community culture at 3Cloud that, that, that makes this such a great place to work? I think that because we continue internally to promote that growth mindset mm -hmm. and the uh, the can-do attitude that everybody has. I don't think there's anybody internally that would say, hmm, I don't think I can do that. I think every single person there is like, oh, oh, you need me to go figure out this thing I've never done before so mm -hmm. that I can be yes. an expert <laughs> all, to the client. All done that. <laughs> I, there you go. And you put on the I am an expert face and you go and do it. Yeah, um, I call it the 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 dread pirate Roberts syndrome. <laughs> you know, you just step into those shoes and do yep, it. And do you it. become the expert. And you become the expert, yeah. and 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 then you are because you've done it. And I think that everybody that we work with has that that mentality of 
if I don't know how, I will figure it out. Yeah. Well, and we also have our SOS community, and we have, uh, I think, a culture of mentorship. And so when you, when you do need some, some, some backup, it's there. Yes. And you can reach out to people who will step in. And you in. don't have to feel like you're stupid that you don't know. Right. By saying, hey, I'm trying to do this thing. <laughs> can I have somebody give me a hand? Hey, is there like some Databricks person that can come and look at this notebook with me and, you know, spend 15 minutes just code pairing, mm -hmm. right? P partner programming, something where let's just look through this and explain to me, what does this thing do? And that sharing of knowledge, it, it, it's, we're all very giving and willing to say, sure, I'll sit down and show you. I'll help you. I'll and that becomes a team effort yep. then. Awesome. Good. So you've talked about your, your enthusiasm for work and solving data problems <laughs> yes. and being involved in the community. How do you offset that? What's, what's the work-life balance? Um, I go climbing. Okay. Every, every Sunday, Paul and I go to the local climbing gym. And uh, we, we've been climbing for, for 20 years. Uh, I'm, I'm a little fluffy, but I'm kind of strong. <laughs> I can, well, I you, can get you out live, to the top. You live in the right place yes, to, for, to be rock climbing. Um, I, I, I get to see my grandkids and my kids a lot. They both uh, live here locally. Um, I have an hour set aside every morning that my daughter and granddaughter and I go for our morning walk. So, you know, we go out and we get our exercise, and, and that's important that you, know, you do something every day. Yeah. Um, being able to work from home and have my kids come over and just hang out while I work it, it, it is the world to me. Just being able to Fantastic. get to see my family and, you know, have time to go and go, go shop with them or take them on trips or, you know, go places and, and just the... There's my balance there is, is okay. with my family. So this is, this is our first visit to Albuquerque. You know, a year, a year ago, we, we tried to connect. Yes, we yes. were kind of, <laughs> kind of rushed coming, coming back from a, a funeral mm. and uh, weren't able to stop in. But, yep, uh, yep. you know, we spent some time here this morning, went down to the market, and uh, what a comfortable place to live. It, it, is, a, it is a beautiful place. What, so tell me, tell me what's great about Albuquerque. Um, it's not as hot as Phoenix. Okay. And it's not as cold. We met cold. in Phoenix. We, yeah, we lived okay. there for six years. <laughs> it's not as cold in, as it gets in the north. I mean, temperature-wise, it, it really is the ideals. Um, if it does snow, it melts that day. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fall and the spring are, are just beautiful. We get the, the hot air balloons. You just missed Balloon Fiesta. Last week we had 600 We're balloons. We're going to try to catch some balloons tonight. Yep, Probably not yep. 600 balloons. Uh, but no, it, the, the mass ascension is just in, in, incredible. Um, there's a tram that goes up to the top of the mountain uh, that you can take up. There's a restaurant up there. Uh, it, the, the outdoor activities are just endless. I mean, the, the things that you can go and do in the state, just really cool things outdoors. I am a board member of a charter school here in Albuquerque. Okay. Um, and if anybody's interested to go out and, and check it out, it is uh, Amy Beale High School. Mm -hmm. Amy Beale was a, uh, a Rhodes Scholar who was killed in South Africa during uh, apartheid by a, um, a mob of angry black men. And during the reconciliation process, her parents uh, met with the people that, that actually killed their daughter and founded the Amy Beale Foundation. And the school is uh, founded on service and scholarship are their uh, founding ethics. And okay. every, every student has to do 100 hours of community service as part of their senior project and graduate with two college credits. Both of my daughters are graduates. Um, my oldest daughter, okay, she's going up on her 10-year high school reunion, I guess, maybe 12. Uh, um, she, she was introverted and very shy and would not have done well in the traditional high school environment. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I found, like, I've got to find some different school for her, and the charters were, were starting to, to come along here. And, and Amy Beale is ultimately where we ended up uh, selecting for her to go and since then I've been involved with the school um, as a board member as a parent um, and I, th I think it's really important like I said before to as a member of a community 
to have a civic duty and, and be involved and make your, make your community a better place in some way. And um, I just want to encourage everybody out there, if, if, you, if you're not, to try and find some place that you can volunteer to give your time to make, make something valuable in your community and, and make something better. Um, uh, the school has struggled financially because the legislator never gives us enough money and every mm -hmm. year we think we're not going to have enough money to, to make it to the next year, but somehow we always do and we have very dedicated teachers and social workers and we work with a lot of the uh, uh, challenging students in the Albuquerque population. Okay. And, uh, it, it, it brings me great joy to know that there is a school that is inclusive and welcoming and diverse and is giving our young population a, 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 a foundation that, that it will set them up for success in the future. Okay. Well, thank you. So, well, we'll yeah. promote that. Yeah. That's a good message. It is.